Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. We've got a special treat for you today. This is a VOS R9 Les Paul Standard. Well, of course we're getting a compensated nut. We're taking out the polypropylene nut and putting in a Corian compensated nut. That... So we're going to take a look at this uh, tailpiece and see whether we need to do a wraparound or not. Now this is the 11 to 48 strings. We're stepping it up, stepping it up and tuning it down. Not a micro speck of wood. And this is the nut. The ends, the leading face, and the floor. Actually this came out pretty nice, uh, but uh, once again Correcting what the CNC machine missed. Okay, let's start with the tailpiece. First of all, you saw in the beginning of the video that the strings were wrapped around reverse wrap. There's a couple of issues with that. These original tailpieces are actually aluminum. They're not the nickel plated brass. They're very light. Part of the deal with these old vintage instruments. The problem with a wraparound is these strings, if you wrap around, they will cut through that aluminum like a cheese cutter. So if you really insist on doing that, put your original tailpiece aside and get a disposable one because you will destroy it eventually with the strings. There's lots of examples where a wraparound is a good idea. This isn't one of them. You'll see on the video screen, I have a link for an example of an ES-335 that did need a wraparound, and I explained fully why we went that route. Okay, next step. The posts actually go into the wood at the top. They're rock solid. Thumb wheel adjustment is good, but the actual inside diameter of those holes was not a perfect match to those posts. There was quite a bit of slop, a good 22 thou play. That's taken care of. We've got a beautiful press fit. All that movement and slocky machining is taken care of. It's rock solid now. Next, these top three saddles needed to be flipped 180 in order to squeeze the intonation out. So the way the guitar came, it wasn't possible to intonate it. Before I go and plug this in in the studio and let you hear just how accurate it is, I just wanted to cover all this stuff. So moving along, the frets, as you saw earlier, no question about it, this was done with a CNC fret dressing machine, but they did miss a couple of spots, and as you've heard me say numerous times, we took care of that with the tech deck and dressed those spots. So the high spots were leveled, recrowned, buffed to a mirror shine, and let's move up to the compensated nut. With 11 to 48 strings regulated for E flat, half step down. All right, I'm doing something a little bit different this time. I'm arpeggiating a chord, in this case, E major seventh. So I'm gonna loop that and play the exact same chord an octave higher so you can actually hear how the guitar is regulated from one octave to the next, string to string, fret to fret. So I'll let that play. basically played the same chord first position, fifth position, and seventeenth position. But I just wanted you to actually hear the guitar across the entire length of the neck, string to string, fret to fret, chord to chord. So let this roll. sharp minor 9. And compare R9 
are these chords in tune? Have a listen for yourself. Anyway, so I'm going to let this play this uh, sort of G sharp minor thing, and uh, and then just kind of flick the pickups around, and let you have a listen to this guitar. Mm -hmm. 